can say it. So, um, it's good to be here with yeah. you, Brian. Um, hey, man. I would, Before uh, we get into yeah, the uh, big message, I forgot to have the opening prayer. Steve usually reminds me about that. How yeah. about if we ask Steve to... <laughs> To lead us in a prayer before we get too deep into this, Jackie. Let's do it. All right. That would be good. That would be good. Father, Mm -hmm. we come before you tonight, and I know that you have put people here in front of their computer screen or in, 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 in front of their smartphone, and they're listening to this program tonight, and they have questions, and we are endeavoring to answer those questions that are on their heart and in their mind, Lord. So we would just pray that you would give ears to those to hear and a heart to perceive and a mind to understand the things that the Lord has prepared for you tonight. And in the understanding of the end times, we ask it in Jesus' name to bless Brian and Mo in this broadcast, and we're just grateful for the heralding of the message of the end time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Steve. Amen. Now, Jackie, you sound rather tired and worn tonight. Have you had a hard day? No. uh, Yes, I'm uh, just been busy, uh, you know, night hours. uh, You take a watchman. He he don't get much rest. uh. (laughs) God's always impressing on him. You know, what are you going to tell the people next what what is the burden of the Lord you know what I'm saying oh yeah what is the what is the revelation for now what is the word of God for now and so I believe I have something to share with the audience um, something that really what I believe was a little go nugget last night as I was dealing with the four horsemen um uh, where I caught something. Uh, a was it in a dream or a vision or something? Is that how, how do you receive these <coughs> these messages well, from God, Jackie? Well, first of all, you know that testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Mm-hmm. And we know that, you know, in second, I believe it was Amos chapter 3, 7, it says the Lord God will do nothing first. Except he reveals his secrets to his servants to prophets, he will absolutely do nothing. It has to be declared by his prophets. So, um, and uh, so, this is how revelation comes. Uh, many people, you know, in the last days, he said he'd pour his spirit out, and uh, you know, they shall prophecy. But um, revelations is different from prophecy. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's secrets. It's uh, hidden mysteries uh, that God only reveals to uh, His servants, the prophets, such as Revelation chapter ten of this mighty angel that comes down from heaven, <clears throat> clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head, a covenant, and a, has the pillar of fire under his feet. The same angel that led the children out of Egypt. Uh, same one coming, same power, same signs, uh, same work. Um, and the rainbow represents covenant. Uh, if the Bible says when this angel comes down from heaven, that the, he will begin to reveal the mysteries of God and that they shall be finished. And so, um, as he has declared unto his servants, the prophets, and, uh, and then so there it is, uh, but I was, uh, last night I was looking at uh, Revelation chapter 6 about the first white horse. All right. And I noticed something that occurred years ago in my life with uh, the Ezekiel wheel that had something to do now, I know, with uh, the four, the living creature, the four, uh, the four beasts. That John, um, you know, spoke on, and, it, and it's also in Ezekiel chapter one. It describes it to be the cherubim, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And so, I found it awesome that last night that I saw these four beasts 
uh, dealing with the four horsemen, each one of those four. Mm -hmm. and I could, uh, we could probably go into that. It says, uh, oh, yeah. Down, down here it says, uh, let me read it to you. All right. Chapter six of Revelation, Jackie. Yes, Revelation chapter six. Um, it talks about uh, here. Okay. Let me also say before I get started, good. That the book of Ephesians. Also, I'd like to read something. Uh, I believe it's Ephesians chapter three, where Apostle Paul. Uh, start reading for, from verse 1 uh, through, uh, I think it's 39. We're going to read. It says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Notice this, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and, and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. And to me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men See what is the fellowship of the mystery, which was from the beginning of the world, has been hid in God, who created all things but Jesus Christ. And I thought that was very, uh, you know, edifying. But when we go down yeah. now to the first white horse here, um, we're talking about, let me scroll down here. You said to preach unsearchable mysteries. Is that the words I heard you use there? Yeah. You didn't know okay. you, uh, let me let me go back to it. Let's see. We're talking about the mysteries here, Paul was. And, uh, I believe it was first. Oh, you don't to have to go back. To make all men, verse 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in, in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And he talks about the certain riches and searchable riches in verse 8 uh, to the Gentiles. And so I thought this was very important to express the prophets, the, the holy apostles and the prophets who God reveals his secrets to out of this chapter in the last day by his spirit. And this credibility to confirm his word. And uh, so when we go to uh, when we go to Revelation chapter six, if you notice, uh, you know, there's Something here I haven't spoke a whole lot on. It's 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 when the the first seal of the white horse. I caught something here last night, and it was dealing right. with this, the four beasts in Revelation, and, and it did give us something about that this was the cherubim, that this was the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And uh, wow, you know, and it talks okay. about having. The living creature, and I want I want to show you where they are today. All right, I'm going to read about them, and, and each one of these saw each one of these four horsemen. And John was told to seal, not to even write the seven uh, thunders down. It says when, when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, so they had a voice that could be understood. They had voices, but John was told not to write. 
these thunders in the book if they were on the back side sealed up. From what I believe, Revelation chapter 22, where it says, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of the book any longer. And so, it says, uh, in, in Revelation chapter 6, 6 1, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of a thunder. One of the four, four beasts, notice that, one of the four beasts, uh-huh. saying, saying, come and see. Or otherwise, I'm going to show it to you now. Look look upon this. Look upon the scrolls. Right. I also noticed in, in, the, in the middle of the wheel was the Spirit of the Lord was in the middle of the wheel, but there was a hand. If you read Ezekiel uh, chapter 1, it talks about a hand coming out of the wheel with the scrolls or the mysteries of God. And we know mm-hmm. that, that has not, Ezekiel has not been you know, fulfilled completely yet. There's, there's other dry bones, and there's a some small, there's a small remnant of the 144,000 here. And God's going to seal soon. So, uh, but in each, with each horse, I noticed each one of these beasts were different. With the red horse, now it says the same. If that, well, it follows suit, is what I'm saying. It says in uh, 6, verse 3, And when he had opened the second seal, you know, under the red horse, I heard the second beast, look at that, say, Come and sit. And there went out another horse that was red, you know, that he should take peace from the earth. Now, and then it, there it follows is. Yeah. again. It follows suit again, and then here's the other. And I heard in the midst of the, let's see, as I'm getting to the tail, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast, notice these four beasts, uh, come and speak. And, be, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that set up upon him had a pair of balances in his hands. Yeah, and I'll go into that in a minute. Break it down, but mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. And, and I heard, and I heard that he had opened the. Let's see, I believe it's the fourth seal here. Yeah. And I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, "Come and see." Otherwise, I'm going to show you this now. It's no longer so that the Lamb had prevailed to open the seals, and uh, you can see that up. At the beginning of the white horse, you can see, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Now, what I noticed here in the revelation that I got is there's four more thunders to go. Do, do, do you notice mm-hmm. it talks about the Lamb with one of the seals, the white horse? And then it says it was, uh, John said he heard a noise, and as it were the noise of a thunder. And this is referring to the, the in Revelation chapter 10 when the uh, seven thunders uttered their voices. Hey, John says, I was about to write. He was about to write them down. And then he was told to seal them up. And not to even write them in the book of Revelations. Can you believe that? You know, I can. I don't know exactly what, uh, what the reasoning was uh, for that. Right off hand. But, you can uh, go back to Daniel chapter 8 where Daniel was told to seal it up. The vision mm-hmm. you know, of Daniel's 70th week till the time of the end. And you know, right. here, and in Revelation 22, where John was told to seal not up the sayings of the prophecy of this book where it picks up Daniel's last week. They, we are. Uh, blessed here because we have uh, the Lord in Revelation chapter 22 uh, having mm-hmm. mercy upon us Gentiles and yes. showing us mercy yes. and waking us up every morning and you know and letting us uh, wake up to see another day which was blessed and he draws us unto him grafts us into the branch that's the best thing to do Jackie we don't have to Amen. remain just a, a lost Gentile 
And that's what I think is great about what you were reading about Paul. Paul went out to share this message with us Gentiles. Wow. Where would we be? He had a heart. I believe he said he travailed in birth. You know, Mm -hmm. Paul had such a heart for God's people, such a love that, you know, he put himself last and all. Well, and the thing is, if if he had been accepted in Jerusalem, you know, and they weren't trying to kill him all the time, then we might not have heard the gospel, you know, or we might be like uh, some of those little picnic tribes or whatever that are just now finding out about the gospel. So we're pretty blessed. Well, I'm so thankful that, amen, I'm I'm so thankful, Brian, that, uh, you know, that we do have, just a little space to repent and um, get on our knees and, you know, and humble ourselves like little children as Jesus said a child in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. To humble ourselves, you know, like little children. And when we do that and we make an effort, we have to strive to enter in. When we act upon that outside of words being spoken, it causes God to move and inter- intervene in our lives, and uh, you know, and, and then we can overcome whatever we're facing. Any obstacle, alcohol, drugs—I don't care what kind of spirit it may be from hell. I'm telling you, God will break the yoke. He will, with that anointing, it will break the yoke of His people, and He will heal His people. He will save his people, they will know it, and their joy shall return. And so I'm so thankful that, you know, the Lord has even spared me to even live to see even these times. A lot of people would say, don't you want to go? I had a mother, and and people years ago said, I don't want to be living when that time comes. I said, why not? I said, it's Mm -hmm. the greatest time this ever been, the prophets have desired and longed to see this day. I said, I'm going to be here. Now, they looked at me kind of hard or funny. And mm-hmm. I said, uh, that means your redemption is is, dry, is, is drawing nigh. We, yeah. We need to look up, you know. Jesus Amen. Said, and we are, and we were to pray for one another and uh, mm-hmm. have fervent charity. Above all things, have fervent charity. Yeah, you know, yeah, because so that we might be healed, and that means lending a hand. That means uh, helping your neighbor, neighbor, loving your neighbor as you love yourself. But who is that neighbor? I believe it's the mm-hmm. ones that hear the word of God and, and are doers of the keepers of the word of God. Uh, I believe that's about as straight as it gets. And uh, but. Uh, mm-hmm. We are so happy to be here to be spent. I mean, now to be spent. Like Paul says, I was spent. And we are, we are spent. Yeah. We used up. And I'm so glad that we have raised this. I was questioning God almost. I said, God, do you want this week? Do you, do you want me to, do you want me to, uh, take seven transferred truckloads or crates of wheat into Israel. I said, this is ridiculous. This is, sounds so crazy. Sounds mm-hmm. like a fool. Sounds like a fool. I said, about a month ago, I said, if so, then you're going to have to move. And so I won't go into every detail, but the Lord is moving. And uh, matter of fact, I have one fellow that I saw in the vision about a month or two ago, because the people I couldn't hardly get them to respond. That man, that that man that I had to dream about, wrote me a couple of days ago and says, "I'll be up there to see you, the first of the years, and look at the farm." Amen. Yeah, I know. The last time I talked to you, you had somebody uh, kind of interested in in the farm uh, in in one of your one of your one of your places there, Wisconsin, I think it was. What got me, uh, I took a sister up there from South Georgia, and, you know, and they didn't want to really, they they were too caught up in the world. And I told brothers and sisters, I said, we've got to get some help here. We need sincere people. My people don't have a heart for God's people and only care about the things this life or this world. 
And then I told my family here, my wife and brothers, I said, I promise you all that I will sell it. I'll do whatever I have to do so that we can save ourselves and make our calling and election sure if we have to. And so I had a dream before I went to Wisconsin to, to give them a try. And matter of fact, one of the brothers are still with us now. His name CJ. He stayed with us, and he's going to help us as they are preparing now to bag the wheat. They they've got it set up up there now. Uh, they're in Wisconsin. I'm in South Carolina. And so, but I saw this man in the dream, and I told him about it before I made the trip. Mm-hmm. And I got his name, and uh, you know, it's like he came to me in a dream and offered me so much for, you know, the farm. And, and it looked like nothing was going to happen, and so we just waited, 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 and I went up there and spent about a month and gave the people a chance, and you know that all they wanted to do was murmur and complain because they're spoiled. And I said, well, do what you want to do. I said, you know what, that's fine. And so, you know, because uh, I knew that God would send us the right people that had a heart for his people instead of just words. I, just don't, I, believe we do, I believe we don't need to love in words, but in deed and in truth. So uh, the thing that happened, I got up there, and after I saw the kicking and I saw certain people, uh, you know, that that told me that they knew that they would go to hell. Can you believe that? Somebody told you that they knew they were going to go to hell? They said that God had given them such a witness about this and that they lived, stayed with us for several days or a week or two. And they, and they started crying. They said, we know what's going on here. But they said, we just can't seem to give the world up. And she says, I know, this woman, and she says, I know that this is God. And she says, I know that this is my last chance and God will never deal with me again if I turn him away. Did she, did she accept the Lord? No. She, I don't even hear from her anymore. And, you know, and that's what caused me to you know, have to seek God in desperation and uh, because of the shortness of time. We got lives on the line in Israel. We got people over here to get in their places. And we can't be caught up into this world like Martha who cumbered the things of the world and Mary, you know, only the, only minded the things of the Lord. You, if, you know, we just can't. Uh, we have to be died out to ourselves. And uh, like John the Baptist came on the scene, he said, I must decrease he must increase. And so what occurred is I had a dream, and I shared it with some, some of the brothers. The, the Lord said, if you have a dream, let him tell it. And so when I looked at him and told him, it looked like an impossible dream because the man would have found out he had cancer that was wanting to purchase a farm. Wow. And I just found out a couple of days ago when he, when he wrote me, and he said, uh, you know, he said, I, I'd been dealing with cancer uh, treatments or something like that. But he says, I am still interested in the farm. He said, I'll be seeing you early next month. Wow. And it was the same man that came to me in the dream. <clears throat> I knew wow. his name. I knew his name. I saw him. And so, Brian, this... People can stay behind if they want to, or they can stay in the cities. They can stay wherever they want to. In Babylon, they can stay in the herd. Most of them are going to wait too late to where Russia, the Communist Party, is going to take over. You can see them threatening now Japan over their waters over there, that they're going to get in a war with Japan very soon. That's in the news. I don't yeah, know I heard that. Japan's about to start getting weapons. You know, they haven't uh, had that ability to have weapons for since like World War Two. I guess they've been kind of a non-combatant type country, but they're going to get weapons now. What I heard was so that they could keep China in check. But then some of the other people are saying that they're going to join forces with China ultimately. So I don't know. I don't I know. You know, Russia has to subdue at least three of the ten horns. They have to right. subdue between their teeth. And y'all heard me speak of this. I'm sure people heard me speak of it. And, it. and then about a week or two later, it's in the news about North Korea shooting another 
missile across Japan over there, you know, setting off one of them big missiles and, uh, and uh, you know, disturbing Japan. And then it was immediately after that that China had their ships out there real close by and they were getting ready for retaliation if Japan had did anything. And so they were actually uh, sending Japan a strong... Uh, they were sending him a strong message. Uh, we are going to take take it back. We're going to take the ocean. We're going to take these minerals. These two or three. It's a pretty large area over there. It's just mm-hmm. like Russia saying we want Alaska back. You know, and uh-huh. we're going to take it back. But we're going to wait till you become so weak and so wicked. And, and just like in Sodom, you know, remember when they were drinking and they were drunk and like in the Noah's day? Yeah. They were partying, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage, they were building, they were sowing. Why would they want to go on building when Jesus is coming back? The kingdoms of this world are going to be tore down in just a matter of three and a half years. When those prophets are come up on the scene, the, the Satan's kingdom is going to be completely tore down. I'll be dealing with the, the <coughs> New Jerusalem. Is it in Israel? Or is it, is it, or is the city of the north in the heavens of the man out of the New Jerusalem? Who is he? Uh, I'll be dealing with that message soon to reveal okay. that. Or, you know, but, but as far as uh, now, so, um, there's just so much, Brian, as you know, that's going on. And Steve, you had something about the Russians. You may want to share. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, the thing is, is that I've been reading uh, some of the things that have been happening on the Israeli front. And the Israeli, uh, uh, I was reading in the Arutz Sheva, the national Israeli national news, that the uh, medical system and the medics and the army and the IDF are preparing all the medical centers with uh, antidotes for chemical warfare. And, uh, you know, I kind of scratched my head a little bit. Well, what kind of antidotes are they talking about? I mean, you have to be pretty specific uh, and know what type of chemical warfare is going to be against you, used against you uh, to come up with an antidote and to uh, distribute it throughout your, your country in case you are uh, uh, receive missiles with chemical warfare on them. And then I read an article just recently uh, about Russia and Iran, and uh, 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 Israel has accused uh, Putin and Russia of sending some of their top scientists to a biological uh, weapons manufacturing facility in Iran where they uh, have taught um, the Iranians how to manufacture anthrax and put it in their... Uh, uh, in the missiles to attack Israel. And, of course, this is the thing that has enraged uh, the populace so over there is that Russia is working hand-in-hand with Iran and their top scientists to develop this uh, chemical weapons of anthrax to try to wipe out the population of Israel. And, uh, it, you know, something is always coming up on the forefront uh, regarding uh, what's happening as far as the drums of war are concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that's why Jackie wanted to talk about the four horsemen. Uh, yeah. We know the, the black horseman is, is generally considered death. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Brian. And I believe that's referring to when Russia, you know, subdues the, subdued the three ten, of the ten horns. Because you have the ten horns, and the seven kings in the city of Rome, sitting on the seven mountains, uh, Revelation chapter 17, you have the beast restored by the last 42 months. You have the ancient Roman revived empire of the new era, yeah. new Asia. With, but they will start a war where the Russia will rise up under the red horse and the red Chinese just like we're seeing in the news while we go against Japan. And uh, they want they want to bring Japan under, too, see. And, uh, mm-hmm. and it holds what? Uh, the third what? Was it, Steve? The well, Japan is the, the third largest economy in the world. 
And, uh, of course, they are in the throngs of financial instability just as much as the euro is and just as much as the United States is. But, of course, they are a financial power to be reckoned with. Yeah. Uh You know, this red horse, uh, it it rises up and subdues three of the horns and brings it back to seven in New Euro Asia. Uh, and, so you, you know, think that's take, Europe? That's I think it's go. coming. I think it's going to be Europe, and I think Germany's coming back in the picture. Uh, I believe you remember the Berlin Wall went down, and it you know Ronald Reagan so got his orders from the Pope to uh, you know tear the wall down under Gorbachev, and that's what mm-hmm. he told him to do. And so you know that's what I was trying to say. These thunders represented the political, religious, and economic system of the beast and who the, who the main players are in the last week of Daniel. These four horsemen, each, like I said, each one of those uh, is a thunder. There's four more thunders to go. We, we Now I'm, I am for sure yeah. last night that the first white horse was the fourth thunder because it, it says I heard the noise as it were a thunder. So there was one of the seven uh, thunders uttering his voice. And so I just so happened to catch it. He just dropped it in my spirit. And the revelation comes, you can be one of the ignorantest men, you, you know, like some in the Bible. They they didn't, they didn't, weren't very wise or noble men or called. Not many wise or noble men are called. Right. They say the foolish things to confound the wise. And, and you know, and so... That's who he used. Many are called, but few are chosen. But we're talking it's about funny you mention that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I was just going to tell you something that. Go right I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm open here, brother, brother Brian. I'm open. Yeah, I was going to say it's funny you you mentioned that um, about the foolish. She uses the foolish to confound the wise. Because I was talking to a fellow the other day, and. Uh, and he told me, you know, he feels like he's a little bit stupid or whatever because he's he struggled academically his whole life, you know, from being a kid all the way through grade school and high school, and you know, and that's as far as he went, of course. And yeah. uh, you know, but that don't mean God ain't got plans for that man. You see what I'm saying? Just because, I mean, I sometimes struggle to do what I got to do with school and and things, you know. I'm kind of struggling tonight with getting things done for my training, you know. And uh, Amen. it's like, it, it'll come to me, but I have to, in God's timing, you know. I don't claim to be some brainiac genius, but uh, I'm just a willing vessel, and that's that's sometimes what he needs, Jackie. Steve, you know. Well, Brian, you know, I grew up. I didn't get, you know what grade I finished in school? Huh? I went to the eighth grade and I played hooky the majority of that. Wow. And, uh, that's as far as I went in school. Yeah, and see where God, God's still able to use you. You know, and, uh, give it out. Yeah. That's who he uses. He let me get enough education to read the Bible, and, you know, I do pretty good. And that's how I was able to, you know, learn his word. And I believe people today should open up the Bible and read it, and uh, I believe they should uh, be God, pray, fast. We're in an hour where we need to be fasting and praying for the spirits that's on the people, because... God honors those prayers if they're honestly. He, yeah. He, he honors, like the man you just spoke of, uh, God would not have him on this, uh, you know, have have him here in you unless he had a purpose for that man, unless he's warning that man or, you know, trying to exhort or comfort, exhort or reprove him or whatever or help him. Well, that's you know, exactly be, what I tried the right to do. Track. Mm-hmm, I tried to take love. You'd be crazy for spending all that time and that, all that money that you've worked for for nothing. Uh, like, mm-hmm. what's the purpose of this waste, so to speak? Yeah, what's the purpose of this waste, Paul said, and I do, do not believe, Brian, that it is a waste. It may look like it's 
in vain, but I do believe that some of those, even though it may look like it fell on deaf ears, I still believe you cast your bread upon the waters, it'll come back not many days hence. We're going to have some that fell away from us that's going to Mm -hmm. be in trouble. And you know what? They're going to come back. The Lord says, see there, I told you. I told you that this work was not in vain. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to see that when we see these horses let loose. And I'm telling you, we're, we're going to see... Why, why Russia is doing what they're doing and threatening America right now. And uh, you can see the Chinese threatening Japan. It's obvious that when we go to war, I, I told people in Ezekiel, I told people who the America was and Daniel. I told Ezekiel who the young lions was of England. America is one of those. Uh, the Chinese are fed up with America trying to read them their what they call their rights. Uh, <laughs> it was just in the it was just on the news that Russia said you're not going to interfere with our rights. And you know, they're fussing over rats now and over what happened of losing uh, a Russian, letting him die. Uh and they're fussing over Putin, you know, taking this big man who was rich in the oil, taking him out and so what is this leading to? Well, we're going to wait after the first of the year, like the man asked me who who hosted me as his guest today earlier. Uh-huh. Uh, he said, we're going to watch this, what you're saying. He said, you may be telling the truth here. He said, you may be right. He said, I want you on again in January. Can you believe that? Oh, yeah. It impressed him, it impressed him so he believed that we should reach out to the people. He said, I can help you pay reach. I think it's 500000 Wow. And so, yeah, and so we're going to express our heart. And said, we're going to look like Lazarus as a beggar now. But Lazarus, we know his end. We know where he went. So, But he didn't have anything. He, But he had he had the Lord. He had, yeah. you know, he had God on his side. So we need God to speak to the hearts of the people out there. To we we can't let stand back and see God's people starving. Uh, what, what where does the love of God dwell in us if we shut up our bowels of compassion? We cannot do that. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver. The laborman is worthy of his hire, and that's just uh, God never changed that. If the people this this nation is cursed. This whole nation has robbed God. They have done it. And uh, Malachi chapter 3 tells the people to bring all the tithes. Now you find to get on your knees and pray and seek God. And say, is, is this a queer voice? or is, where, where is this voice coming from? And Jesus told them, said, if you seek me, um, you, know, I, you will know whether this doctrine be of God or whether it be of man. And I'm telling people tonight, you can get on your knees, but God's not going to turn back to you. He's not going to do anything for you until you learn to cry, just like the Jews mm-hmm. are going to do. When they get broken and surrounded with the armies, when, when the armies come in on them and America is taken out of the way, they're not going to have us, America, on their side anymore. And they're going to have no choice but to turn back to God. And so we need to, yeah. you know, with the judgment coming upon America, we need to <clears throat> focus now on, you know, uh, striving to enter in this straight and narrow gate. Uh, we mm-hmm. need instruction. We need men of God, but fear, fearless men of God who won't compromise because the people's our souls are on the line. It's as simple yeah. as this. The Lord is... The Lord is speaking now. He's been speaking. He uses men, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets. He he uses them for the edifying of the body. And, you know, this nation, uh, God wouldn't do that if he didn't have some people out there uh, scattered between the highways and the hedges out there. And they're out there. And we want to reach out to them and pray for them so they can get free and freed up so you know they can flee out of Babylon and out of her my people come out of her 
nation. So. Now, when Israel gets surrounded, they are going to be crying out to the Lord, and they're going to come back to him. But I guess that's how they're going to discover that Jesus was the Messiah, probably as they're, as they're calling out to God to do something to deliver him. I mean, I yes, guess they will. they're, they're going to most of them, I mean, okay, we know there's going to be 144,000 at least that, that recognize now. Do you do you think those are just the evangelists, or is that the amount of people that's going to be saved out of Israel? Well, if you go back from the beginning of time, Brian, you'll find Enoch prophesied that he saw yeah. tens of thousands coming, you know, with the Lord coming. Yeah, to the rule and reign. He didn't put it in millions, but he put it in thousands out of it. You know, like the tribes. And, like, you know, there's only going to be a There's 12,000 from each new, tribe. In the New Jerusalem, there's only, that's what Moses and, and Elijah's coming to do, to put them back in their places, like in the Exodus of old. They're going to put them back, the tribes, right in their places, just like they did in the Exodus of old, when they get back to the land of Israel. And it'll be, it'll, and that will, because the prophets always did that. Um, this is also uh, going to be, you know, it has to be restored back to, the tribes have to be put on that north, the south, and the east, and the west, and them gates. For, mm -hmm. for when uh, the new Jerusalem comes down, the twelve apostles will judge, be judging them uh, on each side. Three apostles, I believe it is, on each side. And so the twelve apostles. Because the prophets have come and restored that. And I believe that Moses and Elijah coming. So, you know, it's amazing. But they're going to put them back in their place and uh, prophesy 1,260 days and clothe in sackcloth. And they do have a testimony. And if, they, if the Jews reject their testimony, then he rejects them. And they wow. have such power that you know, today, like I said, it's so apostate. Everywhere you turn around, I have learned. That's why I'm going to be preaching about, see, the Jews trying to tell me that, you know, a Jew is a Jew of the flesh, and I disagree with that. Because a Jew is a Jew inwardly. Just because you're a Jew don't mean God's going to stay. Because our identity no. is not from the flesh. And they, they, they look at Jerusalem, and it's going to be coming a den of habitation of devils, so who has taken it over, and why would Satan be allowed to even come in there if it was so holy, <clears throat> and if it was God's place? It's, it's a part of the kingdom of this world. Jesus told the Jews, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. He says, I was born a Jew, but he says, I'm God's son, and he says, I'll, I'll come down from above. He spoke of another kingdom, of a new Jerusalem that he came out of from heaven. Uh, on the city of the side of the north, the city of the great king. I believe that's in Psalms. I believe you can find it in there. So, And so they're teaching us that we should worship in, in Jerusalem like the woman at the well. He said, you say that we should, did you say we should be worshiping in Jerusalem or in the mountains? And he said, woman, that's not true. He said, he said, the hour has come and now is that the true worshipers are going to worship me in spirit and truth. And for the last 20, 30, 40 years since Israel become a nation, it ain't been nothing but a money racket of the church, the Christians. They have false the lie. They, get, they think they got to go all the way to Israel to get a blessing. Or we're not blessed out of us. Uh, I believe our blessings come from the Lord which made heaven and earth. It does not come... Uh, it does not come, what I'm saying, God is not telling us. Now, I know that his people, I do. I know that he has people in Israel. Now, I'm not talking mm -hmm. about them, so I want to say this very clear so people won't misunderstand me or say it, or, or quote something that I didn't say. I'm, I'm, not, I'm talking outside the remnant, okay, of the 144,000. Right. I'm talking about the apostate church and... The, the Jerusalem that answers to Arabia today, which, which is uh, in bondage, is, is not is not the New Jerusalem. And the Jews, <laughs> but, but Jesus Christ is going to come and destroy the temple and the, and, and the man of sin and all the Ahabs and the Jezebels and 
when when Elijah comes, there's going to be a showdown over there, and, and it's going to do away with a, uh, you know, they're going to be up against the man of sin, their self. You know, that's going to have them killed, and so, so these prophets. Now these two prophets, to, they're going to have the power to kill people too. Then anybody wishes to harm them. It, the fire will come out of their mouths. It shows you who the two two eagle wings are. That they are the two eagle wings. Jesus is the wow. head right between their eyes. Mm. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and they're go- they're going to be made up in that day his jewels. But but you know all I've run in is the people telling me I'm blessed out of this Jew, and I said, well, this is a money making deal. Uh, all y'all are doing is getting rich off of each other, and I don't want to have nothing to do with that. Your your, your money is your, your God is money, and the things mm-hmm. of this world, and and a true Jew cannot. I worship idols. They cannot do that. So, you know what I'm saying. So I just got out of this mess and let them fuss about it. And, you know, let them stay in this apostate in bed and with this door because they're in bed with this door together. So, not talking about the remnant now because we can't touch them. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong like David Wilkerson exposing, you know, Joe Osteen and other people. And I, and I do the same if I have to. But I know we're coming about up on the hour, so I want yeah. people to pray about what God would have you to do because soon your money is going to be gone. You're not going to have anything no like gold nor silver. And uh, in the day of the Lord's wrath, uh, it's going to strike when this red horse uh, makes war and dashes dirt into pieces and they're coming, so get ready. Steve? Brian, I'd like to uh, close your program with the urgency of the hour. And right. the events uh, that were in Newtown are an indication to the population of this country of where we are going. And where we are headed for, we're headed for martial law. And the reason that I say that is because the gun grabbers now have plenty of political momentum to finally uh, force our uh, administrators, our governors, our senators, our congressmen to enact uh, legislation or uh, to uh, uh, bring about policies to uh, take the guns away from the people. And, of course, the people who believe in having guns and weapons, and which, you know, in our ministry, we don't believe in opposing the government in that regard, but there are many millions of people in this country that believe in using weapons to defend themselves, and they're going to yeah. go after them. And, of course, it is going to cause uh, such an upheaval in this country in civil war and civil unrest uh, that we will see martial law uh, come into uh, a being. And the you heard Jackie and I talk about the cables on the interstates and the uh, gates from South Carolina all the way up here to the Canadian border uh, where you can't turn around on the interstates anymore. You have to stay in one direction, stay on your side and and get off at at a ramp. You can't cross the medians anymore. And they are going to make it impossible for you to uh, go from point A to point B without being uh, immobilized either by this type of system or the other systems that they have implemented. And so we know that the urgency of the hour, Brian, is that people must get into their place in Christ where they need to be. And uh, we must work while we still have a little time uh, to do the things that God would have us to do to prepare for the hour that we all know we're going to face. We're going to face an hour of famine. We are going to face an hour of war. And we're going to face an hour of invading armies, not only in Israel, but in this country also. And uh, if not by our own government, but by the peacekeepers that are going to uh, be let in to keep the peace here in this country. So all I have to say, Brian, in closing, I'd like to get into a little depth of, about what has happened here uh, over the weekend, but we just don't simply don't have the time. I'd like to you know, discuss a little bit about the fusion centers, the FEMA camps, and all the other things that, you know, 
you are well aware of that are about to be enacted upon the population. But we are all sleeping. We're drunk. We're in denial. And uh, we just don't believe that the things that are about to happen are going to happen. And that's what happened during uh, World War II with the Jewish people. They did not believe that Hitler would enact the policies that he did. And they were not able to... The ones that got out and moved into the places of safety before it all enacted uh, got there. But those that stayed behind under the strong delusion and, of course, under this complacency uh, got caught. And, of course, you can either get caught... Or you can move now and act now and do the things that God would have you to do while you still have time. And I just want to mention our website is www.wildernessmountainministry.org. Go to our website and click on the vision. You'll see some of the things that we're doing for the people and they can contact us, Brian. And we, we're All glad right. to help. Yes, and we'll be glad to hear from them. And uh, we need to help back in the week. We need help. Uh, you know, the support to uh, to those who are going to be blessed during Jacob's trouble mm-hmm. out of the Gentiles. And we're going to need that, folks. And so I just yeah. wanted to close so, here saying, Return, O dispersed to your own. The day of redemption is near. Men's hearts are falling for fear. Be filled with the Spirit, your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up, your redemption is near. Amen. So, uh, Amen. But thank you, Brian, and thank you for allowing us to be on. Time did slip away on us, and I'd like to oh, come man. back later because I'd like to talk about this horse that's going to measure and take away the food and measure it out to the people. Okay, well, I'll have Mo uh, get with you on scheduling a, another appearance because, yeah, I would like to hear more about that, too. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm really with that. these. Are you familiar with these fusion centers that they have? Uh, I've heard a couple of those enough. Yeah, yeah, I've heard a little bit about them. Yeah. You know, I'd like to say, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'd like to say one more time, Brian. Listen, uh, the only thing that'll keep me from letting that farm go, we we have labored for years. Uh, it's almost uh, sustainable for people to ride the storm out if someone does have mm-hmm. a. God to put it on their heart. If if I if I can get the number that God told me to ask for the farm, if somebody has a family, have a big group of people, they may want to check this out. All um, right, or, I, or it, it would only take a certain number for me to purchase this place and go ahead and start moving the wheat. For what I heard in the dream, the man offered me would would save me from even selling the farm. I would even go that far and use it for God use it for the people and I just wanted to let the people know that that I'll have no choice but to let it go if I do not hear from you or if you do not respond all right all right so you're looking for a, a certain number to get her done basically mm-hmm. get the wheat to Israel okay yeah well, we are we are good I heard in the dream 1.3 is what I heard mm-hmm that's what the man said. Yes, that's the offer that he made. It was 1.3, and I said, yeah, it would take to get the crates over there. They're real expensive. I uh, know, I, I know. It's here. expensive. I looked into it uh, earlier this year and the shipping things to Israel. It was very expensive. But I, I'm i not sure if my other guest is, is here yet or not. Uh, Chris, are you there? Well, because I've asked Troy to let me know when he arrives. Uh, can, you, uh, can you hear me now? 